Nestina sat there in front of the fire with a warm tea and the blanket around her. It's like reality hits her. This is real. She's really trapped in this place. And there's a talking squirrel and a mean being with cat ears and tail and Tina doesn't understand what's happening. And it all became too much and she began to cry. It, it must be a dream. I, I must be dreaming. Then Lynx leaned forward and pinched her. Ouch! What did you do that for? To see if you were dreaming or not. If you had been, you would have woken up by now. Ratatosk jumped up next to them. Why are you so mean? You've changed so much. And Lynx went quiet for a moment and then said, You would have changed too, if you would have been a collar on her coat. But you escaped her! You escaped! You are our hero! Lynx didn't reply, but Tina heard fair murmur. Yeah, I escaped. But Ratatosk was too excited to stop. And now we have a chance! This is our savior, she is our hero! And with the two of you we stand a chance! We can try again! But Lynx just looked at her and said, There will be no second chance. And Tina looked between them, not understanding what they were talking about. But y you promised to help me. Lynx didn't reply and the comfort that Tina had felt earlier was slowly changing to fear. What would she do if Lynx wouldn't help her? Then she was stuck here in some strange world with some strange beings and didn't even know how to go home. And then there was some witch queen hunting her and she didn't know what to do about that either. The tears fell down her face and Ratatosk jumped up onto the chair next to her. You made her cry now! Shh! Lynx hushed at them and Tina fell quiet. They're coming closer. They're sensing her. Tina was just about to ask who when she heard the wolves howling in the distance again. She wrapped the blanket closer around her and even Ratatosk went quiet. They won't find us tonight, Link said. Their senses are not that good. But we need to leave in the morning. This is not a safe place any longer. And Fade turned to Tina and said, I will help you. Ratatos began to jump up and down. Yes, I believed in you. I knew you were good. You're our hero. Together we'll stand a chance. But Link just turned away from the window and said, we should go to bed. There's a long way in front of us tomorrow. And Faye left to prepare for the night. And when Lynx had left, Ratatosk jumped up on Tina's shoulder and whispered in her ear, Faye's a good person. Faye really is. Faye doesn't mean to be like that. Faye's just changed. But why? Tina asked. Faye escaped from the mines. W what mines? And why was Faye there? And at that moment, Lynx came out of the bedroom and said, Because I trusted someone who fell from a tree. Eratatosk looked at Fer. But you saved us! Both me and the others! Yeah, I did. Lynx didn't say anything else, but Faye seemed restless. But in the end, Faye just gestured towards the bedrooms and said, Let's go to sleep. It's a long way ahead of us tomorrow. And so they went to bed. But Tina couldn't sleep. She lay on the bed that Lynx had made for her on the floor and thought about everything that had happened. She felt lonely in this strange world, lost and confused, and Lynx scared her a bit. And then there was Ratatosk. Ratatosk was nice, but Tina understood why Lynx said that she'd fallen from a tree. There was nothing bad about her, but definitely something different. Tina suspected she was kind of one of a kind among talking squirrels. And she began to cry again, lying there on the bed. But then she heard a door open, and Lynx came in to the room. Faye went over to Tina and lay down next to her. It's cold, Faye said. It was a bit strange, but Tina felt so good to have someone next to her, even if that person also was a bit strange. 
It was less lonely and she felt better already. She wanted to ask Lynx about this world and, and what it's all about, but Lynx pretended to be asleep. Tina knew that because she could feel Fairtail tickling her legs, but she decided not to say anything. She could ask Fair more questions tomorrow. And in the end, Tina fell asleep. In the morning, she woke up and went to the kitchen. Ratatosk and Lynx were already there, and Lynx must be in a foul mood in the morning, Tina thought, because even Ratatosk was quiet around Fair now. They ate breakfast, and then Lynx began rummaging through Fair wardrobe, looking for clothes for Tina. When Faye found them, Faye threw them to Tina and said, Put it on. It's a long way ahead of us and it will be cold. Where are we going? Where are we going? said Ratatosk. We need to leave this place. The wolves will find it. But where are we going? Lynx took a deep breath and then said, We're going to Old Bear. To Old Bear? For mushrooms? No, you will not eat mushrooms with him. But why Old Bear then? We'll need supplies for our journey. So where are we going? And Tina just looked between them. She didn't understand what was going on. We're going to the palace, Link said in the end. To the palace? But why? She'll be looking for her. Why, why are we going there? I, I don't want to become a collar on her coat. Ratatosk sounded miserable. And she'll take us to the mines as well. She will never expect that we go there. She'll think we'll hide, Link said. But why? Why the palace? Ratatosk sounded like she would cry now. But Ratatosk, you told me she's the hero. She's our savior. She will defeat the queen. This is your story. This is your dream. This is what we've been fighting for for so long. And now the time has come to overthrow her once and for all. Ratatosk looked up at Lynx with admiration, tears forgotten by now. Let's go. They walked the whole day, and in the afternoon, Tina finally went up to Ratatosk and asked, But what am I supposed to do? You'll overthrow the queen, just as the story said. You're the savior. You come from the land of sun. But I don't know how to. And Ratatosk went silent for a moment, as if this thought had just occurred to her when Tina said it. She jumped up on Link's shoulder and said, Lynx, maybe she will need some practice. But on whom should she practice on? But maybe start with something simpler. Maybe she could just try her magic here. Don't be stupid. If she'll use her magic now, the queen will know we're here. And as Tina heard her conversation, there was a growing worry in her stomach. But I, I don't have any magic. What if I fail? But Lynx just looked at her. You have magic and you will not fail. You are our hero. You come from the land of the sun. And Faye turned and began to walk again. And they kept walking and when the sun had almost set, they arrived at the old bear's house. It was an old tree trunk made into a house. And this was his territory, his magic. Not even the wolves dared enter here. And he had sensed them coming and stood by the door, welcoming them. Come in, come in. His house was full of herbs and jars and different potions. Tina saw pots boiling on the stove, and she was happy to be warm again. So you finally came to visit an old friend, Bear said to Lynx. It's been a long time. Yeah, Lynx said. We need supplies for our way. You don't even say hello to me? In a proper way? Lynx, what happened to you? You know what happened to me. And who is she? Old Bear gestured to Tina. She seems so different from you, Lynx. She seems happy. Almost like Ratatosk. She is happy. You should learn from her. 
but Lynx ignored Old Bear and just went to sit down by the table. And Old Bear seemed to drop the subject for now and instead said, You must be hungry. I'll bring some food. And they sat down by the table and Lynx whispered to Tina, Don't eat the mushrooms. But Old Bear heard fair and said, But why not the mushrooms? They are so tasty. Yes, yes, they can upset your stomach, but they are very tasty. Tina giggled as the old bear brought the food onto the table and they began to eat. When they had finished, old bear sat down by the fire and began to tell them stories. There were stories about the sun and the flowers and the blue sky and Ratatosk listened to them as hypnotized. But Lynx just stood up and said, I'm not a kid, I'll go to bed. And when Faye had left, old bear turned to Tina and asked, So... Who are you? I've never seen you around. Ratatosk jumped up and down excitedly in response and said, She came! She's the hero! All the signs were there just as you told me! And she came! An old bear turned to look at Tina surprised. Really? Did you come from the land of the sun? And Tina nodded. So the old stories are true then. And he went silent for a while, contemplating. I almost stopped believing in them, he said in the end. And what, what stories? Tina asked. And the old bear smiled and said, Stories about Queen of Summer coming back. But I'm not a queen. Maybe you just need some time. But Ratatos got anxious. But we don't have time. We're going to the palace. Bear looked at her with worry. To the palace? Why? Lynx wants her to face the queen. Is that so? But she's just a girl. I know! I know! But Lynx, Faye saved us! Faye saved all of us! Bear nodded his head. Yes, Faye did save us. So, so what happened? Tin asked. And with that, old bear leaned back in his chair and said, It's a long story. It started when the king of wolves rebelled against the queen. That day, we saw the sun shining in the sky for the first time in a long time. Yes! Yes, we saw it! It was a sign! It was a sign! Yes, Ratatosk, it was a sign. But there are many signs, and they can mean many different things. And he turned back to Tina. Many followed the king of wolves and refused to obey the queen. Lynx joined the fight and fought side by side with the king of wolves, uniting all of us. And for the first time in a very long time, there was hope. The snow melted and the sun shone from a blue sky. So what happened? Tina asked. The queen called on the goblins and they came from their minds to fight for her. One night they broke our fortification and took many of us back with them, and the queen sent ravens with an ultimatum after that. We either surrendered to her, or our friends and family would never see the light again. And we were all so worried. What should we do? Give up the fight, or give up our loved ones? We met and talked and discussed options, but couldn't agree on anything. And then, in the morning after, Lynx and the King of Wolves were nowhere to be found. We looked everywhere, but no luck. Soon afterwards, our friends and family came back, and we realized what they'd done. They had gone to the Queen and surrendered to her, and it wasn't long after that, that the queen forced the wolves to follow her as well. And they did. For fear of what would happen to their king if they didn't. And since that day, we've never seen the sun again. Tell her the rest! Yes, Ratatoska, I will tell the rest. Because you see, he said to Tina, one day, many moons after they had disappeared, Lynx returned. Faye must have escaped, but no one knows how. 
no one escapes from the mines. But Faze never talked about it. There has been one thing we noticed, and that is how Faye changed. Faye wasn't the same Lynx as before, and I'm afraid that a part of Fair is still in the mines. Tina felt sad hearing what had happened to Lynx, but Old Bear just said, But I'm happy Faye's found a friend. Maybe you will help Fair find what Faye's lost. But Lynx, she, she doesn't have any friends? Tina asked. <laughs> Bear laughed. No, Faye pushed them all away. Only Ratatos can stand fair. But she is special, you know that. There's an old story too, about when she fell from a tree. But you look tired. Maybe you should go to bed. There will be other nights full of stories that will bring more light into your heart. Come, you can sleep safely here. Neither ravens nor wolves dare come to my place. And with that, they got up and Tina went to bed. And she went to lie down next to Lynx. It's cold, she said. Lynx didn't reply, but Tina could feel fair flickering tail tickling her legs. She smiled to herself and fell asleep.